me Shane from Mission Makes with another vlog and a white cat behind me. I don't know how long she's going to stay there but she's, uh, she's just happily cleaning herself. Anyway, the, I'm going to talk about two patterns that, I'm, uh, that I've made. One of them is the one that I'm wearing and it's a, it's a sleeveless t-shirt, sleeveless shirt, blouse, whatever you care to call it, with a pattern around the back and it's in crepe de chine this one. Um, so we've got a lovely feel to it. A lovely feel to it. Um, it's I bound it with um, satin bias binding. It doesn't. It's kind of slightly upright up here, but I, I really don't mind it. I bound the sleeves with satin bias binding as well. I thought it might be quite nice with a red to, to go with the uh, the colours on it. What you may not have noticed is if I can get this to come down a bit. Now, how do I make this come down that way? There is. I think this is the wrong side of the fabric and this is the right side and the reason why I say I think is <laughs> because it's hard to tell but I've got a funny feeling that's a little bit duller in the red there than that one on this side if there is a red somewhere there and really only I would know that anyone looking at me would probably not say oh she's got a, she's got that the wrong way around let me get back to where we are the pattern I used to make this top is a free pattern that I got with the Love Sewing magazine and that's it. It's this one here, it's the M7322. I rather like that but again I'm not very keen on uh, that kind of a neck. You may have noticed in my uh, prize giving, the one, the one where I told you who the winners were for the patterns, I have a wrinkly chest with getting older and I've got a couple of, see that, a little uh, I've got one there and I've got a couple here and those are blemishes from being with under the sun too much so basically I, uh, I like to cover that up across there and um, yeah, that's better I like to cover those up so the pattern that I did was E at the bottom that one at the bottom and I like that one I think in the winter I might do F the pinky one that we F with the with the um, the slash neck, it's a, it's a bit like a boat neck or a slash neck. I like that kind of style. Um, it was an easy pattern. I made it in about um, I would say about half an hour, maybe less than that. It's a simple one. It's good. Anyone who's learning to sew is very good. I do tend to go for these easy ones sometimes because you can quickly turn them out in no time. And if you're in a hurry and you want to get something made quickly, I you know. I just like doing that and I'm sure all sewers are like that. You, you do some advanced ones or you do some intermediate clothes. I'm on with a couple at the moment um, that I will be telling you about in another vlog. But um, an easy one's nice because what, if you've lost your sewing sojo, which I, I haven't, but there are times where I think, oh, do I really want to be doing something? If you do a simple thing like this and you turn it out quickly, you feel a lot happier. I didn't have to make any changes to it. Um, it worked very well and um, I can highly recommend it, especially for if you're a beginner, a nice little top to, to, go, to make. I'll tell you about some gadgets and that other people have uh, told me about. 21st Century Gadgets, I did a video on that and uh, after that I got quite a few people emailing me or messaging me and telling me about other gadgets that they had, that they had or they came across. And one of them was a lady called Jenny Flake. Now I may not always remember the names, but if I don't, I'll put the name up here because they, need, they deserve a credit for what they've said. Jenny Flake mentioned, she was the first one to say, a magnet on a stick. You can buy a magnet on a stick. And, I, and it just went ping in my head because it reminded me of my father before he died. He, he loved gadgets. He absolutely loved gadgets. And one day we went into, I, went, I went to visit him and my mum. And he said, he, he handed me, handed me this long stick and he says, do you know what it is? And I said, well, no, I don't know, Dad. And I examined it and I said, uh, well, it's a stick and it's got a magnet on the end. It's got something, does it, is it a magnet that's got on the end? And he said, watch this. And he 
he always wore a coat, an anorak, when he was throughout the day, even though he was retired, he used to sit with his anorak on. And because he was always in and out the house and he would go and potter around the garden, he'd potter around what, we, what he called his shack, where he did all sorts of things. And, um, and, he, and he put his hand into his anorak pocket and pulled out some nails and things and threw them onto the wooden floor and they bounced all over the place. My mum was going, oh, Jack, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he says, do not worry, I'm going to show you what I can do. <laughs> and he got a hold of this, this thing, this magnet, and put it on the floor. He was sat in his chair and he says, watch this. He didn't move, he was just like, watch this. And he went like that and it picked all these nails up. He took them off the end. I think it was telescopic as well. Uh, and he pushed it back, put them on the end, put them back into his pocket. And he says, is that not good? Because I do not have to bend down. I can just get everything off the floor. So when Jenny Flake mentioned that, I thought, yes, she's right. If you have problems bending over, doing, picking things up, and we do drop pins on the floor, what a great thing to have by the side of your sewing machine. You know, you can have it hooked up somewhere, and when you drop, just get your magnet, pick it up, and then you put them into your tray. If you can't buy a magnet, just a garden stick, a little uh, bamboo stick, with, take a fridge magnet off the fridge if you're one of those that collects fridge magnets and tape or glue that to the end and you've got the same sort of thing. I know when he used to be a watchmaker, one of the, he was always, sometimes he'd be repairing a watch and the tiny little, he'd be doing a little lady's watch that was really, really tiny and a tiny balance wheel would fly out of his, out of his, in the air as he, as he bent over repairing it. And you'd hear this French swear word and then he'd, uh, he'd quickly grab a big magnet on the side of, that he kept stuck to the side of a metal cabinet and he'd be down on all fours with this magnet picking up. And he kept saying, I do not lose things, I just misplace them. So he'd be down there and eventually he'd come with a tiny little wheel that would be attached to that magnet. So um, I'm a firm believer of always have a magnet nearby in some form. It's really, really good. Next one, I've got my little phone. I've got my phone here so I can see which ones there is. Uh, Becky Ezra said tweezers. Now tweezers, yes, tweezers or pliers. I have pliers as well. Ever so good for pulling things out. And she says to pull stubborn small threads that are stuck in the feet, dog. Small painting brushes to clean the lint from the machine. Uh, glue strips that you can roll on the fabric instead of pinning. Now I also advise you to have pliers or tweezers simply because when I was in my 30s I used to do all my uh, fabric on the floor. I used to cut out, cut out all the fabric on the floor and I used to, pin, I used to do it on a carpeted floor. It's not so bad now because it's wooden and I can, use, I can see them and I can sweep the stuff up, the pins up if, the, if needs be or I can use my magnet. But uh, in those days, I'd do it on the carpeted floor, I'd cut them all out and on the odd occasion a pin would get wedged into the carpet without me knowing. And one day my son was walking across the carpet and squealed and there the, a pin had gone into his, into his heel and had gone in a good half inch and I had to quickly, he was terrified, I just got the pliers, I fortunately had some pliers at hand and I just went, pulled it out quickly before he could do anything and he was so thankful but he's, he's never forgotten that, never forgiven me for it. So that was it, that's always remember pliers. Now, uh, medical grippers or hemostats, that was another one, Mary Kowalski and a couple of others, they mentioned medical grippers or hemostats. Now I'm not sure what they are but I think they're long like scissors with a long rounded end, very long end and rounded so you can get right into things. And Mary Kowalski says they have a rounded end so I can poke out corners after turning through and I can grab and lock and hold onto fabric or pull out stubborn pins. Very good, they are, they're probably equivalent to pliers but probably more practical in a sense. Um, another lady says, um, Bridget Logue said, likes a serger. Yes, I would agree with you. Since I've got a serger, uh, I never had a serger in the olden days, in the old, back in the olden days. <laughs> uh, I used to do everything on my machine. I used to overlock by doing a, a straight stitch and then cut, cut the fabric right down the edge. If you don't have a serger, this is what you can do. Straight stitch down the seam, cut the seam to about a centimetre or less wide and then zigzag along that edge and that's very very similar but it's a bit it's what we would call faffy 
whereas a serger does it all in one go. Some people stitch the seam first and then serge, other ones serge only. I have found that my serger doesn't do as close a stitch as I would like it to do on some garments, so I will stitch first, then serge on some, some garments. On other knitted ones, yes, I'll just serge straight away because it's so much easier to do. Frixon marking pens for light coloured fabrics. I haven't tried those. Uh, I have seen them mentioned a lot on YouTube. So yes, I would agree with that. I'll have to try and get one sometime. And then, that also the Frixon marking pen was mentioned by Bonnie Brannan. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, Rail, Rail, Rail Pico. She's in Australia and she said she had a fold up cutting board made of card. Sorry, that's my daughter telling me. I'll, t I'll have to tell you about that in a minute. It's my daughter telling me something. Um, she says she has a fold out uh, cut cutting board that folds up, it unfolds to fit the top of the tabletop. And uh, she was t trying to explain it to me what it was. I don't know, I haven't found out exactly what it is, but it sounded rather interesting. Connie, Connie reminded me, she said, she said she reminded me of something and I went oh my goodness me we had those when we were kids and I didn't think they existed anymore and then I went Ding! of course they do your granddaughter's got them um pipe cleaners and she was mentioned and I just thought oh yes fantastic so I bought some pipe cleaners I was going to pinch the granddaughters but they were black ones and I instead I bought I, I thought I got these from eBay for about 150 175 and there's, there's about 20 in them and pipe cleaners, because they've got fur on them, those of you who don't know what pipe cleaners are, it's wire that's got fur wrapped around it. And you can bend them, you can do whatever you like with them. You can fold them. The reason why I think white's better is you can get, if you're cleaning anything out, you can get them into corners. And you, when they come out, you can see how much dirt's on it. If you had a black one or a blue one, you wouldn't see whether it was dirty or not. But that you can get into the underneath where the spool is, spool case, and clean the, clean your machine out. And you can straighten them up again and use them again for other purposes. So pipe cleaners, I think they are great. There's lots of other practicalities you can use with that. Um, so yes, the 175 from eBay or Amazon, well worth going for. Danae said I talk too much. And so I said... <laughs> Sorry, Denny, I'm going to say this. Who, me? Of course I do. I'm a Geordie. Geordies are known for their talking. <laughs> I think it was said in jest that, at least I hope it wasn't. If it wasn't, then fair enough. You know, I mean, some people don't like good talkers. Anyway, those are those are some of the interesting ones that people told me about gadgets. If you have another gadget you'd like to refer to so that I can mention you and put it, put, try and see if I can find a picture, then do let me know. I came across this one, which um, I was looking at on Instagram. Sometimes there's an advert comes up, a movie or a video trying to sell you something. And it, this came up and I thought, what a great thing that is. But when I looked and I flicked through and when I looked through to it, it was £29 or $29. And I thought, you're joking, it's just a piece of plastic. So then I went on to eBay and I typed in the very self same thing. And I got the same gadget for, I think it was seven pounds. It, I, I'm not sure if it came from China. It took a bit longer to come here, but I didn't mind waiting. But it's this, look at this ladies. This is to go onto the end of your hoover attachment. Your hose goes in here. It's got two uh, fittings so you can have a, na if you've got a narrow attachment or a big one. And on the end there are lots of look what look like straws. And once you've got it connected to your hoover, you can get into all the little nooks and crannies to hoover up all the dust. And it's good, it was, the, what they advertise it for is for to go around skirting boards and to do windows and to anything that, where you can't get in difficult areas. But that is good for laptops, it's good for uh, sewing machines, for getting into sewing machines, good for cleaning the back of your wind, wind, any, any windows or any places you can't really reach and it'll suck it up. And because it's got the little straws, it won't suck everything up in one go. It'll just suck the dust up. And I have uh, an issue with my house. I don't know why, but it gets dusty a lot. It doesn't matter how often I clean. And I tend to get a lot of dust on top of the chest of drawers in the bedroom. 
and I've got lots of ornaments and things and it means I've got to take everything off and I've got to wipe it all down with a cloth well yes I will do that still but on the odd occasion maybe I can do that once every once a week and I, on one other occasion I'll do that and it'll, I'll hover around or move the ornaments a little bit further and I'll hover around it now I've just gone and lost a little straw come on get back in and I'll hover around to get round to those other areas so I just think this is a good little gadget seven pound from eBay I'm not getting any commission on this ladies I don't do it for commission I'm not getting any commission on this I actually bought two I don't my husband said why have you got two I don't know I just thought one's not enough I need two <laughs> so that is another good little gadget here's all the dust watch this Right. This is see the dust there. So watch this. Um so as I say, if you've got any gadgets, then do tell us about them. I'm gonna if I come across any that might any ideas or gadgets, or if you've got ways of of um, of improving sewing in some way, an old wives' way that you've learned and you've done over the years, then do let us know. I'll credit you on the on the comment, and uh, we'll and show you, you know, and I'll show I'll show my, the viewers what that suggestion is. Now another suggestion that I came across was actually on a German site and that was one of the problems that I have with my sewing machine is I get some on the odd occasion I'm sure we all do you get like a spider's web at the bottom, underneath your fabric when you first start sewing and I found two solutions to that one was I found out on a on a German site and the other one just happened to just it happened to work for me and that was the first one was they suggest that you take lots of scraps of fabric that when you've got some spare cut off cuts cut little strips of fabric just like that this is a, uh, some denims that I shortened and it's just little off cuts of the denim cut the strips of fabric up and then fold them to the, the depth that you want them to be so if you're doing some th uh, a fabric about double that thickness fold them up and then Start sewing that along there. I'll put a little video up and then continue on to your main fabric. And then once you finish it, this will be joined by a thread. Cut that off, and if there's any spiders' webs going, they'll gather. They'll gather there and not on your fabric. Sewing, and you uh, take a spare piece of fabric and put it under your foot of your machine, like so, and start sewing and so if any spiders webs gather they'll gather at the end of there your fabric that you want to sew and have it just to follow on so you carry on and this is single-handed so it's not easy to show you uh, carry straight on and then feed that underneath and like that you shouldn't have any bother getting the spiders web and then you lift it up, lift your foot up, pull it out and you will see that that's the way it comes. It's nice to, and basically all you have to do is cut that off, snip, snip that off and there's your nice start to your fabric. Now a lot of people do that because uh, it's makes, it makes a tidier stitch. And you're about to put your fabric in the machine keep your foot down with the needle down through into the under under surface and then start sewing and for some reason I found that that doesn't cause it to knot at all or, or make the spiders web I have found is if you, you see how the needle is actually downwards I don't know if you can see it's actually in the bottom there so it's in the bottom so what I do is I put the fabric up to there and I I put the fabric up to there and then I put that down and then I start sewing there 
and that should because the needle's down I found that it doesn't cause a spider's web it goes straight into sewing and I that's another way that I would do it I'd bring that up pull it out you see it's just the same sort of thing it's the, it's stopping the spider's web from happening on the back there's the, the rear side and it's stopping that from happening now then Do you recognize this fabric? It's been on one of my vlogs and the next vlog I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Rack your brains. The question I'd like to ask some of you, if somebody might have an answer. It doesn't happen as much now to me but when I first got my um, machine I found that I constantly had static with thread and I'd be threading the machine and then put it both both pieces of thread to the back of the machine and as I let go it would fly up in the air and I kept pushing it back and it'd fly up in the air and it got me very irritated so how do you overcome static or is there no way to overcome static does anybody have an idea let us know because if there is maybe it's not just me that had that problem it might be other people so that's well worth passing that on um, Anyway, the, I, I'll go back to what this little message is. My, I, I was telling my children the other, earlier on, we were going into town to get some, some fabric for to make a little, um, what was it called? We had to get some tool, 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 for to make a sun ray, no. We were, <laughs> sorry, I've just sneezed. We were travelling into town at lunchtime today, today's our day off and we'll work from home and we were travelling into town and as we were going into town, about would be about a mile out of town, there was a fire engine parked up and they were outside a fish and chip shop and all the firemen were in the fish and chip shop getting chips and they were all coming out, they must have all been coming out and they had their chips and getting that and I said oh look at them all, they're, they're all having their fish and chips and um, I said, and my husband said, yes, it must be Fish and Chip Friday. Firemen will probably go for Fish and Chip Friday. And I think some police officers were there. So they were all having this Friday Fish, fish and Chip get together. Anyway, we carried on our way. And two minutes later, this fire engine was flying past us to attend an accident. accident. And it was followed closely by, I shouldn't laugh because the, the, it was quite a bad accident. The fire, the, the fire engine flew past us, the police van flew past us and at the other end there was an accident, two cars had, I think, I think basically one car was going like that, the other car could have crossed his path and they crashed. I'm not sure if anybody was badly injured, I think not but I'm not sure. Anyway, the reason why I, the, this comment was made was because my son-in-law is a fireman and uh, I, I then messaged my daughter and my my son and I said um, I felt sorry for the Darlington firemen today we passed the male contents of one fire engine coming out of a chippy all with their fish and chips looking forward to enjoying their Friday fish lunch two minutes later they're flying back into town along with a police car and an ambulance on a call out to a two car and pedestrian accident that had happened just outside the fire station so it wasn't very far from where they would have been bet those chips were cold when they got round to eating them two to three hours later and my daughter said oh my son said oh dear and my daughter said a husband says welcome to our world apparently they, they quite often attend fire you know they, they look forward to the fish friday and sometimes like that they would have had to all those chips that they bought would have to be rapidly eaten in the two minute journey between where they picked them up and where they had to go to the, attend the accident or they had to lead they would have to leave them in the in the van and when they come around to eating them two hours later after they got rid of the mangled car and whatever they would have been freezing cold so uh, you know it just made me laugh when they said that
Anyway, I've rattled on an awful lot there. I've made two other pairs of trousers. I'm not going to mention them in this vlog. I will mention, I'll probably put them together in the next vlog to, to let you see what they're like. But this time I've also made a dress and it's on my Make 9. Um, and it was the Vogue 8577. A lot of people have, have uh, said that they were doing that one. I loved that one. Now, the one I've done, well, the one I wanted to do was that one with long sleeves. And I was doing a toile first. Uh, but one I've ended up having to do is the short sleeve version but the thing is I'm only five foot one so I didn't need to make it that length because that length that pattern goes down to about there on my legs I think I shortened it and it still went right quite long on me so there I was thinking that that particular pattern doesn't need that stress a and it says the dress a only it needs it's three meters 60 inches wide and four and a quarter meters 45 inches wide so i think i had four meters and i thought right i'll get that out of that and i might have enough fabric you know to, to put the to cut the sleeves out well ladies i didn't have enough fabric to cut the sleeves out and i was having to patch a front panel there because I didn't have enough for t uh, front facing. My front facing is made up of three pieces because I didn't have enough to uh, to do that. Thankfully, it's a toile. I like the pattern. It's great. I'll put some pictures up of me wearing it. I do like it. The toile fabric that I used was a soft, it's like a soft lawn cotton that doesn't crease, I don't think. But it had, it. I had this problem before it has when you when you sew it around the edges somehow or other the fibers twist and it, the inside of the fabric is white the outside is the pattern I think it's been printed on one set onto white fabric and so you get this uh, pattern on one side and not the other and basically it causes that these the fibers of the when, when you're sewing it I don't know if it's a sewing needle or what but when the sewing needle goes down it causes the fibers to twist so the white fibres come to the top. I'll put a picture of it here to let you see what I'm talking about. And that was a little bit irritating. It didn't, it's not in too many places, but it is, um, I think it's more around the back neck where the facing is. Uh, a little bit, a couple of bits down here, but mainly down this front panel. Now, um, because I have a big bust and because I didn't want it to burst open and because it's a toile and because I just wanted to get it finished, uh, I didn't do two things. I didn't put buttonholes in. What I did was I just sewed it right down the front. I will put some buttons on to make it look like it's a button down front, but I just thought, oh, I'm just going to sew down and then I've got no worries about it bursting open with me having a big bust. Um, it's, I, li I love the pockets. I like the swing of it. I think that the soft fabric is a bit too soft and I think it tends to hang a bit too much. The one thing I don't like is um, what it tends to do. It doesn't flatter itself on, on my model here because it, it kind of t it hangs limp. But um, what I don't like is on the back, the back view. I'll show you the back view. The back view there. Still got some nail polish on the back view there. Has. Um, the back view there has has a gathers at the back 
Now, when you are big like me, and when you've got a big bottom there, I have a sway back sort of, it goes in and then it goes out there. The last thing you want to do is put gathers on the back. It makes it look like a bustle. And what happens with a bustle? It gives you a big bottom. So I don't think that flatters me. So on the 12, that's fine. I will still wear the dress. But on the, the one that I'm going to do, the proper one, I, will, um, I won't do the gathers. I'll make it more fitting. Um, I didn't line it. And I don't think I'll line the, the, the new version because I don't feel, especially in this weather, it's unbelievably hot in England at the moment. I can't believe, you know, I mean, it's 24, 26 degrees. You might say that's not very much, but we're not used to it. We're only used to it for a few days and it's gone on for a long time. We're absolutely boiling and I don't really want to put too much weight onto a, a, a garment in this weather to make it make me feel even hotter than I should be so I and I don't really feel the need to line clothes you know dresses and things I never have uh, I've probably lined a couple but never I, I just don't think it's if it was something for winter yes but when it's a dress that I want for the summer I, I don't want to add more weight to it so ladies I've got the fabric and I'll give you one guess what color it is if you know if you know, no, it's not black, not black. What color don't I like? Yep, it's green. <laughs> Let me show you. I was looking after my grandson uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he had, uh, it had, he had had chicken pox, and he was better. But uh, I was looking after him on the on the. Um, when did I look on the Thursday and he was going to be going back to, to nursery on the Monday so I thought right I'll take him I'll take him for a walk and I'll take I went in the car rather and I thought I'll go and visit my, one of my favorite fabric shops and it's a fabric shop on the other side of Gosforth uh, I'll, those of you who live locally I'll put a, pic, a, a thing up there to say who it is unfortunately they don't have a website I have told them several times that they ought to have because they'd sell more fabric. Um, the material is often £10 a yard, a metre rather, but on the odd occasion they have special offers. And I walked in and I caught my eye immediately on this and I just thought, I've got to have that, it's lovely. I don't like green, but I do like army green. And so I thought I'd get this colour. Now, the other thing I'm going to tell you is, I on Instagram, I caught my eye on a particular uh, person's dress. It was a Russian, a Russian model who had this dress on. It was like a camouflage color. I just thought that is absolutely lovely. But she was thin, I'm not. But anyway, I just thought camouflage type fabric is quite nice. Some of it is. But, and I'm looking for the, I keep looking for the, the camouflage fabric that I really want to have and I haven't come across it. So this, when I walked past this, I thought it was really good and it was only seven pound a meter. And it's this, it's, um, I'll open it out so you can see some more. And I just thought, I think that'll look quite nice on me. It's, it's my kind of color. So I'm going to make the Vogue, 85V8577 in this. Let's open it out some more. The 8577 will be in this. It's a cotton. It's like a sateen type cotton, I think. And it's printed on both sides. The color the print goes through both sides, so I haven't got any worries about the fibers turning. And um, all I've got to worry about is what kind of shoes will I do? Will I get to match it? <laughs> so that that will be my next one and I, when it's finished or when i've got it done i will show you what it turns out like so ladies i think that's it for this this time i have got several other videos that i want to do uh, as i said i've got a couple of trousers one i've got another make of mine which i'm almost finished and i'm going to i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell you about it because i think you might i should i think it well, I love it. I love it.
and so I shall tell you about it either not next time if it's not next time it'll be another time so in the meantime shall we say bye bye are you going to say bye bye yeah are you going to say bye bye to everybody hmm? are you going to say bye bye oh you just want me to give you love yes yes you want some love yeah do you want love yeah are you a bit jealous see you don't come in long enough for me to, to look at to look at you do you she's a funny little thing aren't you a funny little dot a funny little dot and she looks black but when the sun shines on i guess she's a dark brown and she's got lots of little stray white odd hairs white hairs so your one of your sisters or brothers must have been born with black and white hair as well she doesn't talk very much she only she meows a lot but you just oh yeah you meow a lot don't you you just you just meow an awful lot don't you and you meow when i don't want you to meow and when i do want you to meow you don't meow do you <laughs> anyway um i shall be coming <laughs> I shall be coming back with some more videos for you. Oh, golly, I'm covered in crockery. <laughs> and uh, so, in the meantime, catch you next time. Bye.